I'm Carol Angela Davis. Thank you for joining me. This is your reality news check. Today, of course, is Friday. It's February 3rd, 2012. We're going to begin with some news for you. The Susan G. Komen Foundation is forced to back up and backtrack and stop being silly. We'll tell you about it. It's about that decision not to fund Planned Parenthood. Also today, wait until you hear this letter from a former slave as he basically tells his former master to kiss his you-know-what. Yes, he did. I'm glad he did. Also today, we have sad news, the death of R&B star David Peaston. We'll tell you about that. Plus, is it true that people who are prejudiced and socially conservative tend to have a lower IQ? Oh, we'll tell you about the study. Also today, great news on the job front, and then Mitt Romney and his continuing foot and mouth disease. The guy just can't help letting his real ideology come through. All the work and all the drama and all of the help and coaching he's had, it's just not enough because his personality just keeps coming through. Let's begin. <clears throat> what the Susan G. Komen Foundation today says, oops, oops, you're right, that was a big oops. The organization is reversing its decision to cut off money to Planned Parenthood, specifically Komen saying it will change its policies in a way that will make Planned Parenthood eligible for further funding. Uh, we should tell you that, uh, <clears throat> so we still have to keep our eyes on Komen to make sure that Planned Parenthood actually gets the money. This is after a huge public outcry and resignations and the threats of resignations if Komen did not fund Planned Parenthood. Dr. Kathy, Dr. Kathy Plesser, a Manhattan radiologist on the Medical Advisory Board of Susan G. Komen for the Cures New York chapter, says said she would resign if the decision was not reversed. Also, we should tell you that Komen's top a public health official, Molly Williams, and the executive director uh, of Coleman's Los Angeles County chapter, Deb Anthony, both of them resigned in protest. And as you know, it is all because the organization pulled funding for 19 Planned Parenthood affiliates. <clears throat> These are affiliates where breast cancer screening is done for free. It's been proven, as you know, that early detection uh, of breast cancer is the key to survival. But Komen founder Nancy G. Brinker says abortion is not the reason that the grants for breast cancer exams are being cut off. But we should tell you there was a huge outcry. A group of 26 Democratic senators, they sent a letter to Brinker urging her to reconsider. The public stepped forward for Planned Parenthood, raising an enormous amount of money. New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg pledged to give a dollar for every new dollar donation late made to Planned Parenthood up to $250,000. Okay? <clears throat> See, we the people, we're running this show. In and that kind of silliness and disregard for people and human life is not going to happen here. In business news and looking at the employment situation, there is good news again that Barack Obama is doing it. The unemployment rate, it dropped to 8.3%. Uh, that comes to us from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. And yes, folks, total non-farm payroll employment rising up, folks, by 243,000 in January. The job growth widespread in the private sector, large employment gains in professional and business services, leisure and hospitality, and manufacturing. Among the major worker groups, we should tell you that the unemployment rates for adult men and African Americans declined in January. We're so happy to hear that. In politics, <clears throat> three chairs for the Senate folks. The Senate approved a bill banning insider trading by lawmakers the vote 96 to 3 it means members of congress cannot use non-public information for personal financial gain the move puts pressure on house republicans to pass similar legislation of the three senators that voted no they are senators tom coburn a republican from oklahoma richard burr a republican from north carolina and jeff bingaman a democrat from new mexico all right let's go on <clears throat> in the race for the presidency now back talking position flipping Foot in mouth, Mitt Romney says he misspoke in remarks about the very poor. I'll say, <clears throat> that's like an understatement. You'll remember that Romney, who of course, as you know, is running for the Republican nomination for the president, said he, quote, is not concerned about the very poor, unquote. Specifically, the GOP front runner is saying, I'm in this race, quote, I'm in this race because I care about Americans. I'm not concerned about the very poor. We have a safety net there. Not if he has anything to do with it. He goes on to say, if it needs repair, I'll fix it. I'm not concerned about the very rich. They're doing just fine. I'm concerned about the very heart of America. Okay, look, we got to just tell Mitt. Mitt is just needs to get his hands dirty. He's just not out there in the mix. Mitt, there is no middle class. You destroyed it, remember? It's no middle class. Those All those middle class people, they're now in the very poor category of the people you're not concerned about. Yes, we know the rich are doing just fine. You're right about that. If there's a safety net that's broken, you'll fix it. You're, you're not going to fix it. You're trying to break it. You're trying to get rid of Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, everything you can get rid of. 
So who are you? You're not fooling us, okay? What did his rival Newt Gingrich say about him? Well, Newt Gingrich says, quote, I believe we should care about the very poor, unlike Governor Romney, unquote. And even Rick Santorum, what did he say? He called it callousness. He said, quote, you know, this is people we're talking about who are on our margins of society, unquote. Now, I did not. That was his exact statement. So that improper grammar does need to be fit. Someone needs to tell him his grammar is not good. All right, now, <clears throat> get this. You're not going to believe this. <clears throat> a letter has resurfaced from a former slave who's 147 years old, apparently in the summer of 1865, former slave Jordan Anderson sends a letter to his former master because the former master wanted Anderson to come back and work on the plantation. He had lost his mind. Nobody wanted to work on a plantation. In it, Jordan talks about not coming back for many reasons, including the fact that the slave, former, his former slave master, Colonel Anderson, did shoot at him when he fled slavery. Also, he cited the mistreatment of his children and said that there, quote, and listen to this, folks, <clears throat> quote, was never payday for the Negroes any more than for the horses and cows, unquote. That is so pathetic. Can you imagine this country? I don't know how we could have done that to, to, to people. Uh, this is what he also says to the slave masters, and I quote, slave master, and I quote, <clears throat> please, listen to this, quote, please state if there would be any safety for my Millie and Jane, who are now grown up and both good-looking girls. You know how it was with poor Matilda and Catherine. I would rather stay here and starve and die, okay, if it come to that, than have my girls brought to shame by the violence and wickedness of their young masters. And we know what that is. That's raping them. He goes on to say, you will also please state if there has been any schools open for the colored children in your neighborhood. The great desire of my life is to give my children an education and have them form virtuous habits. The former slave, that, that was a quote, unquote, the former slave finishes with this line, and I quote again, say howdy to George Carter and thank him for taking the pistol from you when you were shooting at me, unquote. Pathetic, pathetic legacy of this country. Anyway, the question, here's a question about racists. <clears throat> Are they just dumb? Check it out. Are conservatives, social conservatives, generally less intelligent than liberals? That's what a new study from Brock University in Ontario, Canada is suggesting. The study published in Psychological Science showed that people who score low on IQ tests in childhood are more likely to develop prejudiced beliefs and socially conservative politics in adulthood. Dr. Gordon Hodson, a professor of psychology at the university and the study's lead author, he says this, and I quote, People of low intelligence gravitate towards socially conservative ideologies which stress resistance to change and, in turn, prejudice, unquote. Check yourself. Prejudice comes in all forms. Check yourself. In all races, in all creeds, all colors, and all ethnicities, check yourself. Finally, <clears throat> a couple of tidbits today. First, uh, claims now surfacing that 30 rock star Tracy Morgan is refusing to help save his mother from foreclosure. Morgan reportedly offering his mother, Alicia Warden, $2,000 to help save her house, uh, uh, but she owes $25,000, so that's not really going to help her. The house is in Ohio. Tracy Morgan is reportedly worth $18 million. We hope, of course, that that is not true. And then we're so sad to report the death of R&B and gospel singer David Peaston. Yes, he has died at the age of 54. You know him for the tracks, Two Wrongs Don't Make It Right, and of course, Can I? We all know Can I. Apparently, he passed away due to complications from diabetes, and you should know that in 2006, he did have both of his legs amputated because of the disease. His latest album is Songbook, Songs of Soul and Inspiration. Peaston, we should tell you, is survived by his wife and two sons. And we wish the family well, and we certainly send them our regards. Thank you for joining me. I am Carol Angela Davis. I hope you will join me on Twitter at Carol Angela D. Have a great weekend.